All right. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining our webinar. Today, we'll be covering how DTools Cloud can facilitate payment requests that help you collect payment. This is the last webinar of our service management series. So yes, we saved the best for last. <laughs> we understand how cumbersome it can be to keep track of your customers' payment statuses, who's paid, who's past due, all that. So today, we hope you walk away with some good ideas on how we can help you organize all your service payment activity. My name is Chanel. Director of Sales for DTools Cloud, and joining me today is Kimberly Hirsch, our amazing product designer. Welcome, Kimberly. Hey, thank you for coming, everyone. Some of you may already know her from the work that she's done on improving our proposals, but she's also been hard at work on request and collect payment design. Um, so we're really excited to have her join us today. Before we get started, just a few housekeeping items. You guys know we got to do this. Um, so in the control panel to the right of your screen, you will see an arrow that allows you to collapse it just in case you need more viewing real estate. And there is also a questions panel. So feel free to ask questions during the presentation and our team will do best to answer them as we go through. Also keep in mind that there will be dedicated time for Q&A at the end. Today, I'm going to give you an introduction to DTools, the company, and how we serve our customers. We do have a variety of attendees, so I always like to take a moment to share um, a little bit about our company and you know, what, how we take pride in providing top-notch service to our customers. Um, then we'll take a deep dive into how we help request and collect service payments so you can stay organized and the team can have visibility on where customers stand regarding billing. And then again, after the presentation, we'll have that dedicated time for Q&A. Oh, and, and one more thing, very popular question. Yes, this webinar will be recorded. So if you miss anything or want to rewatch it later, no worries. We'll send over a link to the video once it becomes available. All right, so let me start off by saying that as the market leading software provider to the industry, we make a deep commitment to the success of our customers. In fact, the average customer lifespan of a DTool software user is nine years, and that's a pretty big deal to us. Um, we make a deep commitment to our customer base and um, the level of trust that um, our customers put in us um, is, is, is important. We have helped over 7,000 companies just like yours cut costs and grow revenue by streamlining their operations and becoming more efficient. Um, so you can expect that your team will be fully trained, guided on best practices, and supported um, during the deployment of DTools Cloud to help you get a near immediate return on your investment. The product's amazing. Yes, I'm biased, but it's true. Um, <laughs> and we're continually expanding on um, the capabilities um, to give you the best possible experience. So let us help you um, take your business to the next level. All right, so just a little bit about how DTools can help you get more done in less time without fat sacrificing efficiency. Um, we're all about helping you streamline your proposal process so you can get those deals signed and sealed as quickly as possible. Um, with our platform, you can create award-winning proposals that really impress your clients and help you close deals faster than before. We also hope it's easy for you to collaborate with your clients and build strong relationships. You know, you can work together um, more intimately and also collaborate with your team in one central hub, sharing ideas, discussing options, and getting feedback in real time. Um, this not only helps you close more business, but it makes the process just more enjoyable for everyone involved. And of course, we all know Teamwork makes the dream work, um, which is why we've designed DTools Cloud to help you work smarter and faster with your team. Assigning tasks, tracking progress, and communicate with each other more seamlessly, allowing everyone to stay on top of the snowball <laughs> that we're building and get things done this more efficiently. 
And finally, we're all about supporting your business growth and expansion, which is why we've made DTools Cloud scalable and adaptable to your changing needs. As your business grows, our platform can grow with you, providing you with the tools and resources you need to succeed. So with the recent release of service, our goal was to help make it easier for our customers to present service plans with every proposal that goes out the door, hoping that that will increase the likelihood of your clients accepting your service contracts and help you build that reoccurring model that everyone so much enjoys. Um, and by calling out the value of your preventative maintenance plans and, and your preventative care options and allowing clients to choose that at the beginning of the relationship is super impactful and says a lot about your professionalism um, to the customer. And now we have set appropriate expectations that can organize the post-installation relationship in a more transparent way. We know that keeping your clients happy is key to running a successful business, and our service management suite is designed to help you guys do just that. So now we're going to hop into service payment collections. Um, we want to give you a smooth and hassle-free experience. Um, you can now effortlessly share and collect payments. Our service plans payment collection feature makes it easy for you to manage your finances and get paid quickly. So first up, creating payment requests. With our custom payment request feature, you can generalize personalized payment requests to your clients with just a few clicks. You can also have fun and make it your own by including a custom message or your company logo to give it a more personalized touch. And then about sharing those payment requests. It's time to shine and demonstrate how easy it is to do business with you. So whether it's sending your clients a link via email or providing access um, through a, you know, a URL, you can kind of wind down and all the printing and say goodbye to managing mounds of paperwork and enjoy a more electronic, um, easier way of managing your payment collection processes. Also, payment delays can really be disruptive to your cash flow. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> so with DTools Cloud, we have your back. Um, we want to make sure that it's easy um, for you to automate prompt payment reminders and tracking them to help ensure that we are able to collect and don't forget about those people that are pending payments. And the best part is that you can see the statuses change in real time as customers um, go ahead and, and, and pay those invoices. Um, and now, you know, both office users and field users have the ability to create invoices and collect payment on service calls. So once you're done with your service call, you can easily generate an itemized invoice that will include all labor and products that were added to the service call. And then we also have those payment integrations. You guys remember the Stripe, the ProPay, the Card Connect. This dovetails nicely with those integrations and allows you to conveniently collect payment on using any of those methods. Um, that's very secure and quick. And then the cherry on top is the reporting and the analytics, the visibility. And you now have access to insights into your payment history, the ability to identify trends, and the performance um, of your service plan. All right. So there you have it. Generating, sharing, and collecting payments now just got a whole lot easier. So now you've got the service contracts to manage. You know, where do we start? Um, with just a few clicks, you can generate a comprehensive payment schedule tailored to your service contract. You're going to simply enter in your start date, the contract length, and the billing amount. And DTools Cloud will automatically fill in the blanks based on the key contract details that you've defined, eliminating all the tedious calculations. You can also request payment for one billing period at a time. 
This ensures accurate invoicing and gives you the flexibility to manage payments efficiently. And then again, keep track of outstanding payments, right? Never miss a beat because it's going to be really easy for the entire team to identify um, where the payment, where a customer is with a particular payment status. All right. And then regarding service calls, no more juggling multiple systems or manually inputting data. Everything you need is conveniently available in one place. So just imagine with me here for a little bit that you created a service call. Um, we've defined the issue reported. Um, the technician has entered in the actions taken and the next step, and it's all neatly organized in one central location. And the details are there as well, right? We're going to calculate the total time spent on the service call along with the product totals and the labor totals and also even account for the truck roll, field, field, the truck roll fees if applicable. And then lastly, if the service call is covered by a service contract, it automatically highlights the coverage details. So your team will be in the know about the contract terms when they're handling clients in the field. If you can't tell, we're really excited about this and Kimberly is gonna show you guys some really cool stuff. So at this time, I'm gonna pass it over to her and she's gonna kind of dive into everything that we alluded to today. Kimberly, I'm gonna go ahead and make you the presenter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, great. So thank you so much, Chanel, for that intro. Um, so what I'm going to be going through today will be how to request payment for your service contracts, for your service calls, and um, a bunch of things that we have coming soon. So as you can see here, I'm viewing all of my service contracts. Um, and in case you missed our last two webinars, um, once you add a service contract to your opportunity, it's accepted by your client. Um, once that opportunity is pushed to a project, it will automatically appear here in your service contracts view. So I'm gonna go into this uh, silver service plan here. And as you can see here, our start and end dates are blank. And that's on purpose because your service contract could start uh, at a varying uh, amount of time. So it could start you know, once you sell the opportunity or it could start once your project is done. So you can go in there and input that. I'll have it start tomorrow. And there's some smart functionality going on here. So as you can see, this is a 12 month contract. So that end date was automatically calculated for me for um, a year from the start date. So I'm going to go into our payments tab now. And this is where you can generate your payment schedule and request that payment. So first, I'm just going to point out a few details that we have here. We have your contract length. We know it's 12 months. We have the dates. We have the billing amount. And we know that's billed monthly. So pretty much everything having to do with that um, those payment details are right here in your payments tab. So before we can request payment, we do need to generate our payment schedule. Luckily, we've done a lot of the legwork for you. So as you can see, we have our first billing date up here. We know this is a 12 month contract. So we automatically have those 12 months in here. So we have 12 different payment terms and we have those billing dates and due dates and the amounts automatically filled in for you. So it's super smart. And you can even change the amount of days that you want that due in after your billing date. So by default, we're gonna fill that in with 10 days, but say you're in a rush, maybe you want it, well, we can just put in one day and you'll see all of those due dates were automatically updated to be one day after the billing date. So I'm gonna go ahead and generate that payment schedule. I'll also point out that you can really modify this and customize it. You can add more payment terms, you can delete these ones. So there's a lot to do there. So I'm just gonna generate. And if you ever wanna go back and modify that, you can do that right in here. And the statuses in here will be automatically updated according to which ones you have sent out. 
So I'm just going to cancel that for now. And we're going to go in and request uh, payments since our next billing date is very soon. So a lot of that information again has been filled in for us. Um, since we already knew we wanted to fill in with that June payment, all of that information has been put in here. Um, there was a certain amount of sales tax that was specified in that service contract. So that's been calculated here. Billing date, due date, all auto filled. Um, for now, I'm going to toggle this on, display payment term schedule. I'll show you what that looks like in a second. And then we have our custom payment request message. So you can type whatever you want in here, and that's going to be displayed at the top of your payment request. So I'm also going to just choose an integration down here. So you'll see all of your integrations automatically load at the bottom of this window. And you can select whichever one you want. Most likely, you might only be connected to one. And this is going to look really familiar to those of you who use our payment integrations to collect deposits. Um, you can decide which methods of collection you want to use. You can um, toggle certain ones on or off, and you can reorder uh, how your client will view them on the um, payments window. So I am going to then create this payment request. And first and foremost, you might notice this uh, banner at the very top here. So as of our last release, you can send these payment requests over to QuickBooks Online. We do have some improvements that are coming to this process that I'll talk about later, but I'll just show you how you can do it right now. Uh, so you can just create in QuickBooks Online. And you can see it automatically checked off the customer because this customer is already mapped to QuickBooks Online. So we didn't have to do that again it automatically fills out what we might wanna put for our service plan in QuickBooks. And then we're just gonna review this and create. So now that's automatically sent over to my QuickBooks online account and you can see that invoice number here. So I'll go through some of the improvements that will be made to that process later on in my presentation. But for now, we'll walk through the elements of the Details Cloud payment request. So on the left here, you're gonna see a lot of general information that's been auto-filled. So at the very top, you'll have your company logo and some of your company information. Then you're gonna have some client-related information. So in this case, uh, I am the client, so you can see that information here. The primary contact information is also filled in here and the billing address and site address. Then in the main body of your payment request, there's a lot of information. So we have that custom message that we typed in in that previous window. So that has loaded in there, but you can edit it right through here. Then your billing date, due date, and all of your amounts, you can edit right in here as well. Down here, you'll see our payment schedule. So this is something that we toggled on earlier. You can decide not to show this but it is something that's expandable and collapsible on that payment request, um, just in case you have one that has a lot of payment terms such as this one. So in the upper right-hand corner, we have some more functionality. So you can download this payment request as a PDF, and I have one of those here. Uh, so you'll see in general, we've condensed that information that was on the right in the very top here, just so it takes up a little less space and is better organized for this portrait view of the payment request. Um, and you'll see your payment schedule fully expanded, all those details, your custom messaging, it will all be neatly displayed here in your PDF. So then, um, these payment requests kind of work an analogy with proposals where you have your editor mode and then you have your present mode. So if I wanted to show this payment request to my client right now, I could go into present mode and it removes all of that editing functionality, the banners, um, everything you don't want them to see. So I'm going to go back then to our edit mode and I'll show you some of our share functionality. So you can email this payment request to your clients. Um, you can fully customize this information here. Um, I'm going to send one of these off just so you can see what the share analytics look like. And you can also preview your email before you send it. So I'm going to please send that. Then we also have share by link functionality. So you can, this is automatically filled in with my, um, uh, client details and I can copy the link for that and then you can see share analytics for these. 
So you can see one minute ago, we sent this to Kimberly Hirsch. It's been sent. Once it is um, viewed, that status will up automatically update. So you have those really smart analytics so you can track whether or not your clients have been looking at your payment requests. We also have some general settings. You can change your payment method if you wanna change your integration, if you do have multiple connected to your account, um, and you can also delete this payment request if you want. So uh, real quick, I'm just gonna back out of here and show you that this status was automatically updated. So there's five different statuses for your payment requests. Once you create them, it will be in this not requested mode. Once you send your payment request, either via link or email, it will go into requested. On the due date, it will be marked as due. Once the due date has passed, it will be automatically marked as overdue. And once it's paid, you will see this status and that again will automatically update along with this paid amount and paid date in this table. So let's go back in here and I'll show you what it looks like to collect that payment. So we have this in the um, lower right hand corner, the submit payment button. We're just going to accept that. And for demonstration purposes, I'll do in person. And then we have a nice little thank you up top. Your client has the option to download this um, if they wanna keep the invoice for the records. And I'll go back out and our status is automatically changed to paid. And we can now request the payment for the next one in July. So that is service contracts. Now I'm gonna show you payment collection for service calls. So I have gone back into that service tab. I'm viewing all of our service calls. And you can see I have a couple in this ready for payment request column. So I'm gonna go into this one. And you have that payment request button in the upper right hand corner. So you can you know, start this request process right from this screen. But first I'm gonna bring you into this work summary because this is really where all your details are at that um, you're gonna have displayed on your payment requests. So you have all your labor information, your product information, the tax, truck roll fee, um, drive time fee, which is new as of our last release. So if you haven't gotten the time to check that out, um, certainly do. Um, and you also have your product information here at the bottom. So we have one item that was replaced. So the process for requesting the payment is really similar to what we just did for the service contracts. We're gonna go into request payment and very similarly, all of the information was automatically filled in for you. So you have all of your numbers, you have your total. Uh, the billing date is automatically set as today's date. The due date you can set automatically. I'll say it's due tomorrow. You can type in that custom message and it does know that Stripe is my preferred payment method, so that is checked off. And we're gonna go in and create that payment request. So the process of sending this to QuickBooks is exactly the same as what you just saw for service contracts. The one difference will be um, you'll be mapping your items um, and that will look, work very similarly to how you do that for projects right now if you're someone who uses QuickBooks on, online. So that will be something that's familiar to you. So I'm just gonna dismiss that for now. Once again, all the general information is here on the left, so all of that's exactly the same. Um, we also have some general info up top, our billing date, due date. Once again, you can edit all of that right in here. If you want to go back and put in the payment request message, you have a box here to do that. If you don't type anything in, this will disappear once you're presenting it. Then we have all of our information for this service call. So the great thing about these payment requests is that they also serve as a little summary of what was done for that call. So we have our names of our technicians up here. We have our total time. And then we have the issue reported, issue found, and action taken that were typed in. And we also have the corresponding dates for those. So really good tracking of what happened for that call. We also have our um, product information here. Um, you know, projector was replaced, we use standard service. And in the lower right hand corner here, we see all of that information totaled up, inclusive of truck roll fee, drive time, and all of your taxes. Then similarly to what we saw for service contracts, you have the same options um, in the upper right hand corner, download it to the PDF. You can go into your present mode which once again, cleans up everything, makes it super nice and neat. 
since we didn't have that messaging in here, it got rid of that box, um, just prepared it for your client size. We have the same information, share by email, share by link, view those analytics, change your payment method, and then you can delete this as well. So we're gonna go back out. And you'll now see, I believe it's down here, this um, was the service call that we were just working on and it was in the ready for payment request column. It's been automatically changed now to be in the payment requested column. Um, so that's really the payment request process in a nutshell. We do have a lot of features that we're working on right now. And I'm gonna run through some of those with you guys so you know what to expect in the upcoming months. So this is kind of the first look that some of you are getting at these new features. Um, so the first one will be notice notification preferences. So um, one thing that I didn't mention earlier was that you are going to receive automatic notifications at certain milestones with your payment requests. So you're gonna receive those notifications seven days before the payment request is due. The day the payment request is due, just reminding you, maybe you wanna remind your client, once the payment request is overdue, so the day after the due date, um, and once you've, oh yeah, so once you've received that payment as well, so you'll receive the notification there. So um, as of next week's release, so you'll get to see this very soon, you'll have preferences on whether or not you wanna receive all of those notifications. They're certainly very helpful, but maybe you're receiving enough emails, um, so you can toggle those off if you want, and that will be something you can see in settings. Uh, the next feature that's upcoming are our automated payment requests, and that's specifically for service contracts. So as you might have noticed for service contracts right now, you will be requesting those uh, payments uh, for each billing date at a time. Um, but um, as of probably early Q1, you'll be able, or uh, sorry, Q3, you'll be able to um, automate that process. So the payment request will be sent out on each billing date without you having to do anything. You'll just set it up once at the beginning and you can customize the message you wanna see on that still. You can customize the email text and all of that will be saved and then automatically sent out according to your um, payment schedule. So the next thing is, uh, kind of goes hand in hand with that, and that's setting up the recurring invoices in QuickBooks. So if you're someone who uses QuickBooks, um, you might have used this functionality before. Um, once you're in an invoice, you can make that invoice recurring, um, and that's super helpful with your service contracts. Um, but right now, you can do that, but it's kind of, you have to go into QuickBooks to set it up. So we're gonna automate that process as well, so that's right within Dtools Cloud, you can set all of that up. Um, so it will be sent to QuickBooks automatically as a recurring invoice. So that's another thing to expect, um, probably early Q3. The next one are some general integration improvements. So you probably noticed that you have to create your payment request in DTools Cloud, and then you um, get to send it over to QuickBooks. Um, and that's kind of maybe a odd two-step process. We're gonna have it so that you create your payment request and at the very top here, you'll have this little check mark to specify that you want this within QuickBooks Online. And once you create, you'll go automatically into that process of mapping your clients and um, your products. If it's a service call, service contract, you'll be mapping that contract line item. Um, and then it will be sent to QuickBooks from there. And the one benefit of simultaneously creating the payment request in Dtools Cloud and in QuickBooks is that opens up um, the two-way communication. So uh, what we're working towards is the ability to change the status of your invoice in QuickBooks, and then that status will be reflected in Dtools Cloud. So you'll see that um, payment request listed out in Dtools Cloud, and once the payments may have been received through QuickBooks, the status will automatically be updated in Dtools Cloud. So I think that's something that some of you have been looking for um, from us for a little bit. Um, and that's been coming soon. Um, the next is the QuickBooks desktop integration. So this is another one that I'm very excited to let you guys know will be in our next release, which is gonna be next week. So as of next week, you'll be able to send these payment requests off to um, QuickBooks desktop in addition to what you already have with QuickBooks Online. 
And all the details for this will be in our change log after next week's release. So definitely, if you're someone who uses QuickBooks Desktop, take a look at that. It will give you all the details of how to set this up. The next is um, zero integration, which is, I know, something um, that's very important for our European users. So the next coming soon feature uh, is something that's not specifically really related to service, but I know a lot of you have been asking for it, which is project progress payment collection. Um, so right now for your projects, you can only collect payment for your deposits, not for the rest of your payment terms. Our development team is actively working on this feature, and once that's out, you'll be able to send out payment requests and collect that payment for all of your payment terms throughout the lifetime of your project. The next one um, does also pertain to um, the project payments, but also service. So this is gonna be your billing dashboard. So um, that's what you're seeing right over here. And this view will display all of your payment requests um, through all of your contracts, calls, and projects. So you're gonna see all of those in one view. And this is something where if you are in charge of accounting, you might want to take a look at this every day. And it's going to give you some really helpful stats up here. You're going to get to know um, if you have any payment requests that are past due, due today, ones that you have to send out the request for, um, or ones that you've received. So definitely very helpful if you're in charge of accounting. And then the final one is something that you might have been looking out for because we've had a little coming soon um, icon for it and that's your um, client payment tab. So once you're in accounts and you go into an individual client, you will then be able to view all of the payment requests just for that client, but that will be once again across all of their service contracts, calls, and projects. Um, so all of that for the singular clients, all in one view. So that's everything that we have coming soon. Clearly there's a lot in the works. Um, as I said earlier, the notification preferences and the QuickBooks uh, desktop will be in our next release. Um, the rest our team is actively working on. You can probably expect most of them in Q3, um, maybe some beginning Q4, but these are all pretty high priority for us. Kimberly, thank you so much for the wonderful presentation. And um, we'll look, continue to look forward um, to everyone's feedback and suggestions of, on how we can um, make our service management suite um, more impactful. Thanks and see you at the next webinar.